Hey guys, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Um, we are finishing up our last week of remote learning. So, or well, phase two remote learning. Um, today, what we, we get to start our bird unit. Um, we're gonna start out, I'm gonna have a link and y'all are gonna watch the Parrot Confidential documentary. It just follows like the bird industry, um, keeping birds as pets, especially the exotic birds. Um, it's sad, not gonna lie. It really pulls at your heartstrings when you see like just how smart these birds are, how long they live, and the fact that we as humans don't take the best care of them. Um, so I want you guys to watch that. There's a like five or so maybe um, different questions and those questions are more of like thinking questions of like parrots are known to be able to mimic language like why is this important um it's not like the typical stuff that we get where like word for word you're going to get the answer like you got to think about like why is it important that these birds are able to communicate verbally um so i want y'all to watch that first um because I feel like it's going to be really important or just not, no, I guess important is good, but like the better word is like, it gives you a lot of background knowledge, especially if you never owned a bird as a pet. Um, this really just kind of helps you to understand like where these birds are coming from and why a bird maybe isn't the best pet for people to be keeping. Um, there we go. Um, all right. So starting with our bird unit, start out with a joke. Um, I saw this comic and I thought it was pretty funny. Um, it talks about like evolution, kind of how like these birds start differentiating, why they start differentiating, and it all kind of started with their beaks. Um, if you didn't learn about it in biology, <laughs> um, birds were studied in the Galapagos, all the finches, by Darwin to see, like, why did these birds have the same beak? Or why didn't they have the same beak? Why were they different? Um, essentially, the beaks ended up evolving over time and changing based on what the bird was eating so that their life was easier. So if they had a more, like, robust, big beak here, it meant that they were probably going to eat something like nuts off of trees. They were going to have to eat something that would require a strong beak to be able to break it apart. Whereas birds with like longer skinnier beaks may be like birds that either ate fruit or nectar out of flowers. Um, so move this to the bottom. Um, we're primarily going to end up talking about the parrot family. Um, because they're the ones that are going to be more commonly kept as pets. Because if you're going to have a bird as a pet, you want something like bright and colorful and intelligent and flashy. Something that's going to make your friends feel like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, however, the parrot family, they're one of the, they're, they contain like the smartest birds. Um, there's tons of different birds that fit into this family. Um, they typically, they're going to have larger beaks meaning they're going to eat like seeds and nuts and stuff off of trees. They're not going to eat a ton of like soft food, like fruits. They're going to, they're going to be like birds that eat primarily seed. Um, they can make, they make very good pets because you can teach them how to talk. They can be affectionate. They can make really good pets. But the thing about birds is that they have like an exceptionally long lifestyle dogs they might live for like 10 maybe 15 years one dog years like seven human years with birds they live for like 80 or 90 human years this bird may very well outlive you and if you don't get it as like a baby yeah honestly this bird is going to end up outliving you if you take care of it these birds are a lifelong commitment they um especially birds in the parrot family they mate for life Meaning, if they don't mate in the wild, or if they don't have a mate already, you're going to be their mate. And they're going to want to live with you 
for the rest of your life. Meaning you can't, you don't need to go get them all. These birds are going to be completely heartbroken and you're going to end up seeing the effects of what's going to happen in the documentary. Or if you're watching the documentary before, like you're supposed to, you've already seen the effects of like what happens when we leave these birds and how heartbreaking it is. So some examples of the popular parrot species that are going to be kept as pets. Um, you've got lorries and lorikeets. These are like rainbow birds, basically. They are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, like all the colors. Um, these birds end up, they're nectar birds. They eat nectar and pollen. So this is a picture of their tongue. Um, they have almost kind of like a little spiky tongue because if you're eating something as slippery as nectar or pollen, you're gonna need a tongue that's gonna have almost like bristles to be able to pick it up. Um, so these birds are not gonna, they don't eat a ton of seeds. They don't have like a huge beak to be able to break them apart. Um, it isn't the best angle, but they do have almost like a longer skinnier beak where they're gonna be eating the nectar out of flowers and pollen. Um, you can also have cockatoos, um, known for their pretty little, their comb or their crest that will stick straight up when they get excited um, or intrigued. They, you're gonna see in the video, they talk a lot. Or if they're not talking, they're making noises. Like birds, they are not quiet. Even if you don't teach them how to talk, they're gonna be chirping, they're gonna be like, Making all these different little sounds, which, if you're not prepared for it, is going to end up annoying the mess out of you. Um, they do sleep during the night, but they wake up very, very early. Like the saying, like, wake up when the rooster crows or the birds wake me up chirping outside the window. These birds do that too. They're going to wake you up. In the movie, um, I can't remember her name, but one of the first ladies that you meet, she has a cockatoo that wakes her up. She said at like 6 or 6.30 every single morning. Worse than a kid, y'all. Worse than a kid. Um, they're not like huge birds. They only end up going like maybe like not even three feet tall, like two and a half feet tall. So they're not, they're definitely not small birds. But compared to some of the other birds that you're going to end up seeing, they are on the smaller side. The cockatiel is going to be a smaller bird too. You can find the cockatiel in PetSmart or Petco. Not necessarily something I'm going to agree with, especially after watching that movie, but you can find this bird in PetSmart or Petco. Um, they're really, really popular birds because of their size. They're small, meaning they are going to need a smaller cage, which again, birds, cages, not really the best thing that you want. Um, the cockatiel is known for like it's a gray body and then it's yellow head and then it's gonna have like these cute little bitty orange blush patches on its side. Um, if you get a bird, the way, the, what you want to do is you, everyone wants to get it as a baby. It's just like getting a dog. Like oh, I want to get it as a puppy and I want to train it and I want to love it so that it only knows me. Um, there's like hundreds of thousands of birds, like exotic birds, that have been given up to like adoption agencies, rescues, because people got one because they thought it was a cool pet and figured out they couldn't take care of it. Um, so the saying adopt don't shop is very, 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 very true when it comes to birds as pets. The blue and gold macaw, this is a big bird. This bird is like, including like from head all the way down to tail, like this bird's probably like three and a half feet long. Um, they're huge birds. In the wild, they fly miles every day. So when it comes to a cage, yeah, this bird's going to end up having a cage, but it probably shouldn't. This bird should just about have free range of the house to be able to move the way that it should. Because if birds aren't able to fly and move the way that they're meant to, then those muscles are going to end up atrophying and they're basically going to deteriorate. It's like when someone gets 
put in a wheelchair for like a year because they had some kind of serious injury. Those muscles in their legs that they're not able to use end up atrophying. And that's why like um, look, sports therapy and rehab and stuff like that are really, really important to keep those muscles from getting that bad off. If you don't use those muscles, then your body's going to say, I guess you don't need them. And they're going to end up going away. Um, macaws, because of their color, their intelligence, um, their rarity, because they're endangered in the wild, they're pretty expensive. Well, a good thousand dollars. In the Parrot Confidential movie, there's a man who buys one of these out of the newspaper in like the 90s, early 2000s for $900. So honestly, this bird probably costs more than $600 to $1,000. But that's Connor. Um, they can be sold as like a dwarf parrot. Their primary color is going to be green with like a little bit of this reddish peach color on their nose. Um, you see the big beak on these birds. That means they're going to be eat their seed eating birds. Um, they have that big strong beak to be able to crack open the seeds. You can also typically find, you could probably find this bird in PetSmart, or Peca, not near as common as like the cockatiel or the parakeet, but you could probably find this bird in a pet store pretty easily. The African gray, um, if you follow my Instagram, then you saw my post about the African gray parrot last week. These are known to be like up there with like maybe the top like top two smartest birds out there. Like they're insanely smart and they're the best talker of all the birds. They're the ones that like most closely resembles a human voice. Um, the other birds you can definitely tell like it's high pitched. It might be kind of scratchy where you can tell like this isn't a human talking. But the African gray whatever it is about them, they're able to like really master the sound of matching a human's voice. African gray, they are um, gray, obviously, but they have a little red tip tail that you might not actually notice. Um, they are a little bit on the smaller side. Um, it's probably just me, but when I think parrot, I think of like, like, a pirate kind of parrot, like a huge bird. Um, but a parrot doesn't necessarily mean a huge bird. Um, these birds are maybe twice as big, not twice as long, but twice as big as a parakeet. A budgie ear, budgie, or parakeet. Tons of different names for this bird. Um, this is like the most popular pet bird in the world because you can go in PetSmart and you can find these like PetSmart right now probably has like 20 of these in their cages. Um, they're an Australian bird. Um, they're small. They're only like seven inches tall. Like they're pretty tiny. Um, they do require a lot of training though. Like just because they're small doesn't mean that they're automatically going to be good pets. It just means that you can have a slightly smaller cage and you're still going to have to work to train them. Um, you can teach them to talk, but it does require a lot of work to teach them. Um, I think one of the last slides we're going to end up getting to is going to be like how to train birds to talk or like not how to, but tips to train your bird on how to talk. Um, Typically, they're going to eat from, like, the floor of the cage. They do enjoy flying around. They do enjoy company. They need a lot of attention. Like, they need a mirror or they need, like, we, I had a parakeet growing up, and he had, like, a little dummy bird that would sit on the spring, and he would end up, like, chirping at it. So much noise right now. Hopefully that'll be better. Um, he had like a little dummy bird and he would sit there, he would chirp at it, he would try to talk to it, he would like move it around because it was on a spring so that it would end up moving back and forth. Um, we put him up against the window so that he was able to see how like birds require a lot of stimulation. Like if they're as smart as they are, they need 
tons of stimulation. That can be like different foods, different things to see, different places to go, like trying new tricks. They need so much stimulation because if they're not stimulated, they're gonna act out. They're gonna start like chirping excruciatingly loud. They're gonna start something called feather plucking, which is where they literally pull out their own feathers because they're bored or they're stressed. Um, they can get aggressive if they're not stimulated. Like, if you get a bird, you have, like, it's not, it's not like a background pet. It's not something like, cute for your friends to come over and see. Like, you have to take care of it. It needs to be out of its cage, like, almost all the time. It needs to be able to move around, do different things. They're a lot of work. The Indian ringneck parakeet, they are, they're bigger. They're bigger than the parakeet on the last side. Um, primarily because of how long their tail is, um, taking up about half of its length. So honestly, its body is just about as big as a parakeet. It just has a super long tail. But they're going to be green parakeets. Um, they can come in different colors. They can come in like all yellow. They can come in this greenish yellow. They can come in blue. Um, the Indian ringneck parakeet comes in like just green. They have that pretty little red beak. Um, and just like most of the parrots, they can be taught how to talk, and they can be a pretty good talker. Um, they are a little bit more expensive, $150 to $500, and honestly, with most of these prices, I would want to just like inflate it up at least a couple hundred dollars. Love birds. Um, they are actual birds. It's not just something that people call couples. Um, these birds live like a long time. They're pretty like, they're, I don't want to say easy to take care of because no bird is easy to take care of, but they're hardy. Meaning if you're not taking the best care of them, they'll still probably be okay. Um, you can teach love birds how to talk, but they do have like this harsh, like shrill, screechy kind of voice. So not a lot of people end up doing that because you don't really want to hear that. Um, the most commonly one kept is like pets is gonna be the peach face lovebird or the rosy face lovebird, both of which you can see why they got their names. Um, with the term the lovebirds, birds plural, you wanna have two of them. Um, maybe like two boys, probably two, maybe two girls, but you, you don't wanna end up getting a boy and a girl because then you're gonna have babies. You don't want babies. So you want best friends. Toucans. Um, I remember last year when I saw this lesson, I had a student who didn't know that toucans were real. Oh, the toucan thing was like something fake that Kellogg's made up. Like a, just a weird burp with a huge beak. Toucans are in fact real. Um, they are part of the woodpecker family. They have this huge beak. And the fact about their beak is that it's actually like almost hollow um and it allows them to be able to like disperse heat where they can either like take in heat through it or they can disperse heat through it because they don't sweat um they are gonna be like the most expensive bird we're gonna go over thousands of dollars these birds are huge like huge birds like three feet tall and their beak is like half as long as their body so imagine a bird with like literally a beak that's over one foot long. You don't need a toucan. You probably don't need a bird, but you definitely don't need a toucan. Um, toucans, they are about the size of a macaw, but because of how big their body is, most people don't end up wanting to keep them as pets because imagine the cage you'd have to keep them in. So getting out of the exotic birds, we're gonna get into like perching birds or birds that you can commonly find in the wild. Um, perching birds, um, about 60% of all birds are gonna be in the perching birds family. They're the largest family of birds. Not the largest bird, but the largest family of birds. There's a lot of different birds that end up fitting in this category. So, of the 9,000 bird species, over 5,000 of them fall in the perching birds category. Um, perching birds are like songbirds, they like to sing, they like to chirp. These are the birds that wake you up in the morning. 
most more than likely. Um, first one up is starlings. Um, these birds, they're found in North Carolina. Um, these birds, if you ever seen like the black birds that fly into the school building, like into like the vents or into like these cracks and crevices and they're really loud, chirpy, squeaky birds, that's a starling. Um, growing up, every spring, they, these birds would come back and they would make a nest in my family's chimney and you would hear them all the time. My dad hated them. Um, they do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they make good pets, but it's probably just because of like, I was raised around them thinking of their, they're like nasty, pesty birds. Um, but you can end up training them to like mimic the human voice and like other sounds that they make. Um, and you can also hear them, think, you can also hear of them as rhino birds. Um, they do require a lot of care. Um, their cages need to be cleaned daily because they do, you see the long beak. It's not like a huge big beak made for like nuts and seeds. This long beak is for fruit. Um, and because it's fruit rather than seeds, fruit has a much higher concentration of water, meaning their poop is going to be runnier. So their cage is definitely going to need to be cleaned every day. Um, you can also have the canary. Um, some of them are going to be bred for their colors. Others are going to be bred for their singing ability. Like think of Tweety Bird. Tweety Bird and Sylvester off of Looney Tunes. Tweety Bird was a canary. Um, these birds, they have like a really pretty singing voice. It's not like shrill or sharp. It's like very like easygoing and it flows. Um, some of them can be bred to have like this little crest on the top of their head. Kind of like the top of the cockatoo. Widow birds. Um, sounds like wider, but think of like saying with like an accent, like widow birds. Almost like a weird country accent. Widow birds. So this is the widow bird, including the tail. Um, they have like bright colors outside of the black. Um, and then slowly they're, they start to end up fading. So you see like this red streak and then it almost kind of like turns into this white color. So this is probably more of like an older bird. Um, when they're first born, they're bright, they're easily seen. And then those bright colors end up fading the older that they get. Finches, this is what Darwin studied in the Galapagos Islands to see their different beaks. So finches is like, it's like, it's a broader category. There's tons of different kinds of finches, um, and they can be found all over the world. So, as far as, like, pets, um, the Bengalese finch is, like, one of the more social birds, and the zebra finch is the one that's most widely kept in captivity. Um, but, I mean, there's ton, there's, like, there's finches here in North Carolina. They don't necessarily look like this, but there are, there's, probably like 50 species, if I, I'm guessing. I'm definitely guessing. There's probably like 50 different species of finches. So, um, we are gonna talk about like bird care because if you wanna get a bird, and I really, really, really don't want you to get a bird. If you're gonna get a bird, you need to know how to take care of it. Um, because not only are they like smart, they're also very needy. Um, they need a cage out of direct sunlight. So, like, my bird that I had growing up, his name was Polly. Um, Polly, he, his cage was right by the window, but it had a curtain so that when the sun wasn't shining directly in, we could open the curtain and he can look out. When it was shining in, we could close it so that he didn't get too hot. Um, you want it to be kept away from, like, vents. You don't want drafts because birds can get sick. They can get, like, a cold. Um, and you want it to be near like a constant temperature. So no drafts. You probably want to keep it away from the fireplace because that in like all that hot air and then it just going away. All that hot air and then just going away. Um, you want to keep the temperature as like steady as you can. And you want to keep it away from like possibly poisonous plants, keep it away from pets that like might want to try to catch them. Um, you want to try to keep the bird as stress-free as possible. This is the hard part because birds get stressed out easily. Um, they, get, they can get stressed because they're bored. 
because you're not like giving them the attention that they need. They could be stressed because they don't have enough room to be able to move around. They could be stressed because something outside the window is bothering them. They could be stressed because they're lonely. Like any, basically anything can stress a bird out. And that's why you don't need a bird. Um, if you're gonna get a bird, you can get them a cage mate. But it's like, it's something that you wanna take very, very slowly. In the movie that y'all are watching in Parrot Confidential, one of the last scenes in there is when they introduce Lou, the cockatoo, into the other bird cage. And it takes them five weeks to do that. They keep Lou outside of the regular bird cage in his own separate bird cage for three weeks, just so he can like see them, he can hear them, he can look at them. Then they move his cage into the other bird cage and keep him in there for two weeks so the other bird can get up close to him. They can, it's, it's like a meet and greet. And then after that, they finally take Lou out. So it's a very slow process of introducing one bird to another. If you do get a new bird and you have an old bird, you wanna quarantine them just like any animal. You wanna keep them in their own cage away, like in a, at least a separate room for like a month to see if any symptoms, any sickness kind of appears. Keep the bird's cage clean because when we get into diseases, they're gross. They're not only weird, they're gross. And they can carry a lot of diseases. So you wanna make sure they have fresh food, make sure they have fresh water, make sure their perches are clean and the cage is clean. Um, you wanna make sure your bird is given baths. Um, it could be something like this, where it's an extension of the cage and the bird is able to like get in, they can kind of like give themselves a bath. Um, other birds will do like a dusting and that dusting is really important for like cutting down like dirt and mites on the bird. The chickens that we have at school, they dust. You'll see them lying down in the dirt looking dead, but they're actually just like moving the dirt onto their body to get in their feathers to soak up oil, which is gonna end up attracting mites. So you want, you wanna like make sure your, your bird has both options. Smaller birds, they're gonna wanna bathe in like a container because imagine putting them in like a bathtub, this little bitty bird in a huge bathtub. They're gonna freak out. So they're gonna prefer to have their own little container. Um, Larger birds, um, as you see in Parrot Confidential, larger birds, they have like a, a mist system or a mister setup where they stand like a couple feet from the cage and it just blows mist in so that the bird can puff up their feathers, get their feathers wet, and then they can go around and kind of like preen or groom themselves. Um, you want to take care of their claws, make sure they have something to scratch their claws on. Um, typically this is going to be like, it's called a cuttlefish bone and it's literally a fish bone that they can end up like, they can rub their beak on it, they can rub their nails on it just to kind of like file them down. You can clip their nails, but it's not something as small as some of their nails can be. Um, as small as some of their nails can be, it might not be something that you want to do. Um, so preening is just another word for grooming. Um, you want to make sure that they can also end up plucking their feathers because they're dirty. Literally just about anything can cause these birds to end up plucking their feathers. And it's not something that you want to see because um, a vet has related birds plucking their feathers similar to like humans cutting themselves. So if that helps you to kind of relate like how serious it is for these birds, then good. You don't wanna, you wanna make sure that these birds are not plucking their feathers because plucking feathers is a sign that something needs to be done to help this bird. They need help. Um, I'll go back. So we said boredom, bad diet. They don't like their food or they're not getting enough nutrients from their food. Um, they're lonely. They need stimulation, they need a mate, or they're dirty. Just about anything. 
birds do like it warm. Um, people do not. So most birds are okay if you like just set them by a window out of direct sunlight where it can still get kind of warm near the window and keep it around like I wouldn't want to go below 70. Like honestly I wouldn't probably want to go below 75. Um, when I had my bird he stayed at my great grandma's house. She was a little old lady and she liked it warm in her house. So he was very happy there. Um, If you want, you can give like a light bulb near the bird's cage at kind of like a heat lamp. If you're worried that they're gonna get too cold, um, or you can do like a heating pad, your bird's cage should have like at least two to three perches or two to three different levels so that the bird can, one, they can move around. But also, if you have something like a heating pad in the bottom of the cage, that heat is slowly gonna rise. If your bird doesn't want it too hot, they're gonna avoid that first perch. That second or third perch is gonna help them to be able to, to get to the right temperature. Um, you may want to cover it so there aren't any drafts coming through. Um, and you want to make sure that if you're worried that they're getting sick, then provide like energy fluids. So like when you get sick, you want to make sure that you're well hydrated. Um, so you can do like sugar water, honey water, even orange juice. Um, something to be able to get like sugar and energy into that bird system. Perches, um, depends on what bird you get. Um, also, it depends on like the size of their feet. If they've got a huge leg or if they've got huge feet, then they're not gonna be able to have like this little bitty perch because they're not gonna have anything really to be able to grab onto. Um, you can buy like plastic perches, but that can be a little bit uncomfortable for the birds. Um, Wood perches work really good for birds. They like it, it feels natural to them because most birds that you buy are like maybe two generations out of the wild. These birds are not domesticated and that's another reason that they don't make good pets. Um, um, Limbs or tree branches, they make good perches if you don't want to have to continue buying perches because some birds will end up like kind of destroying them. But you want to be careful about which ones you're picking. Make sure that you're not bringing in like fungus or mold or bugs or anything into your house or to your bird. Feed in water containers. Um, you want something that's going to be easy to clean for both of them because birds don't really care where they poop. They're gonna poop in their in their food and water bowl. The chickens do it. These birds are gonna do it. So you want something like glass or ceramic or steel where you're gonna be able to take it out, scrub it, dry it off, and put it right back. Um, you know, like gravity type waterers that will hang outside and the birds will use that. The fact that it's outside of the cage, one, it doesn't take up space in the bird's cage, and also it's not gonna be easy <laughs> for them to get it nasty. Um, most birds that you're going to end up getting as pets are going to require bird seed. Um, you can look at your birds a beak and kind of see like what are they going to naturally want to eat. Um, most seeds are either going to be cereal seeds or oil seeds. Um, cereal seeds are going to be like millet or corn or oak. Um, and they're going to have like a higher concentration of carbohydrates versus oils. Whereas oil seeds are going to be the opposite, where they're higher in fat and oil content and lower in carbohydrates. Um, these are going to be like sunflower seeds, it's going to be peanuts, um, linseed, pine nuts, things that you can literally make oil out of. Sunflower oil, peanut oil, pine nut oil. Um, if you have young birds and you're kind of like trying to put them on a seed diet because birds like, have to get like baby birded, their mom has to feed them and it's basically a liquid. When you're trying to move them into a hard food, then you're going to want to take those seeds if that's what they eat and soak it for a couple hours to 24 hours so that they get nice and soft because they're going to struggle to be able to break those seeds open. Um, Soaking it will also stimulate germination or cause the seed to want to, it causes the seed to want to open on its own. 
the water says, hey seed, it's time for you to grow into a plant. And so the seed says, okay, and opens up and starts trying to grow. Um, it also increases the amount of protein in the seed because protein allows things to grow. So if you're soaking the seed and saying, hey seed, it's time for you to grow, then the seed is gonna grow and increase in protein and be healthier for the bird. Um, before you end up soaking them though, you wanna rinse them in tap water, make sure you get any like dust or dirt, potentially any mold or fungus that could be up there that's gonna end up growing or getting worse with the water. Um, mold or fungus isn't super common, especially if you have fresh food. If you have food that's been sitting around for a couple months, opened, then you might not want to use it, whether it's dry or soaked. But if you have fresh food, then you're probably not going to have to worry too much about mold or fungus. Um, oh, discard any soaked seed that your bird doesn't eat because it's going to end up turning into mush and trying to mold, whether or not there was mold up there. Other materials that your bird is gonna want. Um, you can feed them some green plant material and it depends a lot on like what kind of beak they have. If they're like this bird that typically eats a lot of seeds, then they're not gonna eat a diet that's very high in green material, like spinach, kale, um, carrots, stuff like that. Um, too much of that for a bird that doesn't typically consume it is going to end up leading them to have diarrhea. You don't want that. Um, basically, no animal needs to eat lettuce, like whether they're a bird or not, because lettuce is like straight water, like 99% water just about. So your bird doesn't need to eat it. They're definitely going to get diarrhea if you give them lettuce, um, as will rabbits, guinea pigs, so on and so forth. Um, you want to wash any plant material before you give it to your animal, and you want to make sure it's warm to room temperature. Think of like an ice cream headache when you eat something really, really cold and you weren't quite prepared for it. Imagine giving your bird a carrot and then biting into it and it's like 35 degrees. It's really cold. It's gonna hurt. They're not gonna like it. So when we learned about Digestive systems in animal science one, we learned about the bird's digestive system. And part of that is that they need like grit, almost like sand or gravel in their digestive system for them to be able to break it down. They don't have teeth. They need some way to grind it up. So they're gonna need some kind of grit um, in their ventriculus so that it like it'll contract and that grit just kind of grinds it up into a mush, similar to like how we chew our food. Um, you can give them soluble grit, meaning it's gonna end up breaking down like oyster shells. Chickens, they do the same thing. Growing up when I had chickens, we gave our chickens grit. We gave them oyster shells and they would literally peck at the oyster shells. They would get those bits, they would eat it and it would stay in the probe ventriculus. Um, you can give them insoluble, where it's going to be like crushed granite. That's not really going to break down too much. Um, it's going to require, it's going to be a long time before you have to give them more because that granite is going to stay in their digestive system for a long time. The downside is that it's not necessarily something that you may want to give your bird. So most people are going to elect for a soluble grit that their bird can digest. So they're also going to end up needing calcium in their diet, which is, again, where this cuttlefish bone is going to come in handy. It's both a nail file and a snack. Um, where birds can, they can rub their beak on it, they can nip at it so that they are able to get that calcium. It's really important for female birds that you're going to use for breeding because they need that increased calcium to be able to form like a nice hard egg. It isn't going to easily crack. I think all the birds that we talked about today are going to be seed birds, except for the mina, which is the starling, and the lorries and lorikeets, because they're fruit and nectar birds. All the other ones, all the birds that you're going to get from the pet store are going to be seed birds. Uh, basically, just saying the mina and the lorries are going to require a lot more care because of their different diet. 
They're going to need a fresh food. They're going to need, the lorries are going to need nectar. Um, they're going to need their cage cleaned more often because they're eating something that's higher in water. If you have a baby bird and you'll see them hand rearing in Parrot Confidential, hand rearing is when you have a newly hatched bird and you're either going to raise it yourself or the, like the mother may reject it where you're literally gonna have to feed them by hand. So they, were, they need to be fed every hour and a half. That includes when you're supposed to be sleeping. Every hour and a half. When it gets to weaning, you can cut that down to like three or four hours. That's still a lot. Um, but this is gonna be where that, hum that bond ends up forming. But if you're gonna form that bond, you need to make sure that you're around for that bird's life. You can't just give them up because they're going to end up mating to you. Um, so you can end up feeding them like baby cereal, fruit, baby food, all that stuff blended with water so that it's like very liquidy and you can put it in a syringe to get down their throat. When you get a new bird, you want to let them adjust for a couple of days before you're like, it on my finger. They're not going to like that. They're going to be freaked out. They're probably going to peck you. And honestly, if you get a bird, be prepared to get pecked. Um, if you want to offer them a treat, a treat works really good. Um, you just want to keep in mind that like parrot and bird BC is a really big deal because they're not able to fly as much as they should be. So you don't want to like, oh, you did this. Here's a treat. Oh, you did that. There's a treat. Oh, you did this. There's a treat. Because your bird's going to end up getting heart disease. Clipping their wings. Some birds will have their wings clipped, others won't. Um, I don't necessarily want to clip birds' wings because I feel like you're taking away a part of them that they may need at some point. But clipping their wings, you're just taking off those few first primary flight feathers, like the really long ones, and you're cutting them, not cutting them all the way off, not pulling them out, but you're essentially cutting down the shaft so that just that feather comes off. Um, they can flap, but they can't necessarily sustain flight without those those feathers on the front because those feathers really help them to be able to like get take off. If you get a talking bird, um, they say that young male birds are usually the best learners and they're the easiest to teach. Don't know why, don't know how, but that is what they say. You want to remove any kind of distractions when you're teaching them, mirrors, toys, feed, Get rid of all of it so that it's just you and the bird. The same person that needs to be there to teach them how to talk. Like we can't just like, you can't have like five different people trying to teach this bird something because they're gonna get confused. And it could be the same saying, but they need, they need that consistency. Um, lessons need to be given at the same time every day, like very, very scheduled and very short, like only 15 minutes long every day. Use short phrases, short words, and slowly repeat them for the bird. You can't just come on and be like, "Probably want a cracker." They're gonna be like, "Huh?" They're not gonna. You're speaking too fast for them to pick it up. You gotta start out really, really slowly. So that's it. Um, Y'all need to work on look at the parrot confidential moving. Let me know your thoughts. It is. It pulled. It pulled at my heartstrings. It made me very sad, and I think it will open up your eyes to like why birds don't necessarily make the best pets so watch that let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in a couple days